the Face of Facts, ladies and gentlemen, I am Nick Face. It's good to see you all once again. Sitting to my left again is Tom in his Bruins sweatshirt. I am in my Bruins sweatshirt, and I guess you didn't get the memo, Phil. Well, I don't know that the Bruins exist. That's, that's am... exactly right. That's exactly right. Oh, that's how right. I feel about the Celtics. Yeah, yeah pretty much. So that's fine. This show today <laughs> is dedicated towards a playoff preview, and we're going to be talking about how the series have been going on so far. So while we're taping the show, we're getting ready for game number four in the Bruins series. Right now, the Bruins are down in their series two games to one against the Columbus Blue Jackets, and the Celtics right now are tied one game to one with uh, game three and four underway at the Garden coming up later this week. So we're going to lead off our show first today with talking with the Bruins, as this is a team right now that kind of has their backs up against the wall, wouldn't you say, Tom? A little bit. Okay. I wouldn't say um, I wouldn't say too much as, as much as they were uh, against Toronto. I mean, it's only game four, so it's not uh, not a worry yet. Um, Let's talk about how the playoffs have gone so far before we start breaking down each game. So in case you haven't seen uh, anything going on with the Bruins yet for this playoff, the Bruins got out of the first series with a Game 7 victory against the Toronto Maple Leafs, a team which was, in my opinion, more talented than Columbus. Am I not correct on that? Uh, one of the more talented teams in general in the playoffs. We expected it to be either six or seven games, if mm -hmm. I was correct. I think you had six games. I think I said six. And yeah. I was seven games. If we want to rewind the tape back on I that, we might be able to. I said nine for some reason. You I said nine. nine. That's right. That was a good guess. <laughs> Just, um, that was a good guess. But <laughs> probably would have gone nine if you. Yeah, if, if, if you wanted to give the Bruins a grade in. right now on how the playoffs have been so far as a team, and then we'll go with individual performance and all, what would you look at? Uh, hmm. I'd have to say uh, C plus B minus line. Lucky, like, unlucky. Uh, neither. <laughs> uh, I I wouldn't. I'd say they're more unlucky this series than they were against Toronto. I wouldn't say they were lucky against Toronto either. I th I think they uh, something you know kicked into gear in their in their heads in game six and seven against Toronto. So I wouldn't say it was lucky. I think they played two. Uh, Actually, three three good last games against them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're definitely getting unlucky in this series. Have you seen anything of the series, Phil? Or heard of anything no, that I, was going I, on? I've heard and watched a, a little bit of it. I actually watched part of um, the end of uh, Game 7 against okay. Toronto. Yeah. And some of uh, um, the Columbia stuff. You actually, I remember, yeah, that was the team you saw on the road. Mm -hmm. That's the team that Tom, yeah, I remember he mentioned on the show that he went and saw live. <laughs> Yeah. When he went on his trip, but I have heard about how suppose I mean the big you know thing to say is you know Bergeron isn't you know connecting doing anything. Well, yeah, I yeah. guess is he really well, really nothing? Yeah. None of them are doing None. anything. That's yeah. um that's the biggest concern. But I do agree with you, Tom. I, I actually give it a C plus. Um, their performance from their secondary or third or fourth liners has been great. Huh. It's been the first line that has been an absolute no show for pretty much the entire playoff. That's got to change. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't know, know what. I don't know what's that. going on. Do they look hurt? No. I mean, Marshawn. Marshawn's definitely the best one from that line right now. Um, even though you know they haven't really scored much, but he's definitely playing the best hockey right now. Mm -hmm. um, like I was saying, off air, and uh, Bergeron. Only, the only thing Bergeron's really doing is winning faceoffs for them. Yep. Um, and I don't know what's going on in Pasternak's head right now, but he needs to figure something out because he isn't doing squat. <laughs> Does he look hurt? He he could be. I uh, I don't know. I mean, he did get hit hard a couple times in the Toronto series, so that could be something. Um, but I mean, he either needs to be. I think he needs to be benched the game or something because he he he's not playing at, at his best. Right so now. you think that he's still good enough to get on the ice and give the Bruins something? Is no, that... I I think he should be benched the game. I was leaning towards it, but it looks like for game four, your, your big insert's going to be David Backus, who I actually thought should have been in there the entire series already. Well, that's what... It's a poor coaching decision, that's, that's I, what, I feel. That's what we talked about, um, that's what we talked about before the uh, playoffs even started. That's what I said. I said if Columbus makes it through, put Backus in. If Tampa makes it through, keep the young guys in. What you've seen from Columbus in the first four, um, three games at least, has been they're much more physical than the Bruins. The Bruins are a team that's more finesse in a way. 
Yeah, I mean the top two lines are more definitely skilled. more skilled. More talent might come top, from the Bruins side. Top two side. lines are definitely more skilled. The the bottom two lines are a little more physical than the top two. The Bruins, I would safely, I would say, absolutely have been manhandled. Yeah, I mean, other than in game one, men versus little boys out there. Well, I mean, game one they were stacking them up and just rec- absolutely destroying them. Let's start with game one from the Columbus side because. Tom and I were both are in attendance for that game. We oh. both went to that game, which oh. was um, last Thursday. Yeah. I felt all along that the Bruins got lucky getting out of that game, winning at 3-2 to two in overtime. Well, you said they were going to go into overtime I and did, win. and I expected that. But, I mean, I... That was my prediction. This, I mean, I said it too at the game. When they, they had those, whatever, four or five good chances that they couldn't capitalize on, and I was sitting there thinking... I didn't say... Well, actually, I didn't say it a lot. I was thinking to myself, though... <laughs> Don't curse, uh, but yeah. I, yeah, I didn't want to <laughs> jinx anything. But uh, I was thinking to myself that it was looking exactly like one of the games in Toronto. I think it was like game two or something where they were getting a bunch of chances and couldn't pull away with the win. Yep. But, yeah, they ended up getting lucky. Uh, Charlie Coyle was the big star of the game that game. And, I mean, Rass looked pretty good that game too. But, yeah, they, I mean, they came away with the win and uh, I don't know. Game two was a game that the Bruins never deserved to win. They never showed up. That was the point. Mm -hmm. But even though they didn't show up, they still should have won. They gave Columbus that game with the stupid turnovers. Yeah. Um, and Bergeron in overtime, uncharacteristically going on, the, get, getting a penalty for tripping, which, you know what? It needed to be called. Well, It, it was, was a clear as day trip. It was a good penalty to take. Cause, I mean, it, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. No, the puck was have. turned over and the guy was on a breakaway and, you know, Bergeron had to do something. And um, it's, like, it's like taking a foul in the last, like, 10 seconds of a basketball game. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm a big Tory Krug fan, but right now I'm thinking he needs to be on the bench too. He needs to be on the sideline watching watching his teammates play good defense and good hockey because he's – I mean, other than game three, game one and game two, he was turning the puck over like it was his job. Like that's what he was getting paid for. <laughs> I think if the Bruins had Kevin Miller, Krug would be sitting up top. Well, he would either be sitting up top or he would be playing on the bottom D pair. I think that the, what's hurting the Bruins right now is that you don't have that physical Miller out there, one of the one of the people on defense that can help. Because now you've had to you've had to rely upon more of Chara, which you don't really want to do with a 41 year old guy. No. And then you also have to rely upon who, in my opinion, has been one of the stronger players in the playoff, which has been Brandon Carlo. Carlo has been one of their strongest defenders. Carlo, Same goes with McAvoy. Yeah. Uh, I. Mac, I would give right now. I would give McAvoy a B minus. Um, There's still too many turnovers. Yeah, he's. I mean, game three again. He he didn't turn the puck over too much. He was actually no. He didn't turn the puck over too much in game one. It was game, it was two, game and two and three. Yeah, game two and three were, were, the, were the bad over. ones. Um, but Matt Grizzlick and Brandon Carlo definitely get an A from me. Yep. Um, for their play so far in the playoffs, and even I mean even Chara looks decent. He doesn't, he doesn't look his best, but I would still give him. I would still give him like a B plus A minus. Yeah. Our top player in the playoffs for the Bruins overall is, no-brainer, Charlie Coyle. Charlie Coyle. Okay, We talked about this. I just recently wrapped up a sports minute that I did last week for, for our Sports Zone audience that said the biggest highlight of the Bruins for the playoffs right now has been the acquisitions at the trade deadline, which was Charlie Coyle, Marcus Johansson, and was there another pickup that was there? No, I think it was just mm-hmm. those two. It was just those two. They've, they've been, I think, more than you could ask for. I mean, Johansson hasn't been super great, but Coyle has been a difference maker. Can we roll the tape back to during the regular season after the tra- trade deadline back in, like, uh, end of March, end of I February, think it was end beginning of, February, of March. Of March. Yeah, uh, you were saying that Charlie Coyle was a was a terrible move for the Bruins. That he wasn't doing. I don't anything. think I said terrible. I said I thought it was a lot to give up, and I criticized the move because after the first couple weeks when he was there, I didn't see many goal scores and everything like that. Sometimes when I'm critical on a player, I do it for a reason, and the reason that I'm doing it still is you get the most out of that player in return. I don't know what it is. Whenever I was critical, especially in playoffs, I remember when I, in 2013, I was critical of Ortiz on a couple different things. Well, it was your MVP. Um, I was critical of Pedroia during that ride too. Same deal, end up winning. So 
I want to be. I, I, in a way, I kind of target a couple different players. So it looks like you're. I'm being a bully. In you're, a way. Well, you're targeting, but also you're forcing them to do much better, and you're kind of cursing them in, in a, a way. good way. Yep. To do better. So who else can you curse right now? Um, right now, I'm going to definitely do it to Bergeron. Well, there you Absolutely. Go. The guy has been an absolute F performer on the ice this entire playoff. Yeah. He needs to get it out of whatever's behind him and figure out how he's going to be the Bergeron that we all know and love. Do you think it's in his head or do you think it's physical? I think it's physical and in its head. I think we got yeah. mental and physical going on. I think he's struggling because he's probably the worst he's ever played in his career. What do you yeah. think about Mark? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, well, yeah, Bergeron's been, yeah, definitely. Um, and, I mean, they did – he is getting older. They did play a long series against Toronto. Um, but, I mean, like I said, Mar Marshawn's the best one on that line right now, and that's not saying a lot because he hasn't been able – I mean, he had a good chance in uh, game three that he couldn't They've finish had on. all kinds of chances. That's the difficult part. To Marshawn kind of – How many pucks the are the Bruins going to shoot? They're going to go off the post. Well, that's what's driven me crazy this entire year. It's been nothing but we're gonna call it post game. Yeah, now. they had they had what two posts in game three. That yep, Achari hit in. one. I think DeBrusk hit one from everything. Um, and well, I mean, we can talk all day about how bad the teams are. I mean, but neither neither team is really playing any defense. No. Um, and it's all been up to the goalies. And I mean, I was saying off air again that Rask looks really tired, and uh, there's a reason the Bruins signed Halak and. I mean, they're not putting it to use. Is it fair to criticize Tuca for any of the struggles the Bruins have had this no, playoff? No, I wouldn't, I I wouldn't, wouldn't criticize him at all. A bright spot, Why are people criticizing him? Because you hear it, oh, Tuca, oh, maybe he needs to be benched. Like I was in a class Tuka. yesterday from our kids, and, and, and Tuca's always target one. No, uh, you, you can't. And he gets a bad rap, I think, around here. You, you can't target, I mean, I mean, that's why we do, that's why we do the, job that we do to teach kids about sports but I mean because some most of them don't know anything about hockey but I mean you can't blame a goalie if his defense isn't playing I always look He's, two two goals or less if a goalie lets up that's a winnable game yeah no yeah. Uh, you can't win I that's mean, an a performance yeah, by a goalie. Two, two to one games like who do you you where, blame your goalie yeah, exactly like, where where does the blame yeah. fall it, it's, on, coming it's from always on expert. It. that's right that's <laughs> a great point yeah that is a great point you had another question that you were going to say about oh, no, Bergeron. I was just, you, no, about I, no, Marshan. you said Marshan. Because it, um, it wasn't in game two. He uh, had a costly penalty like that led to... Uh, that was Bergeron. Uh, yeah, was over time who had Mar that penalty. Marshan's actually, I mean... Well, wasn't there another where he was called? I know in like game one he... Uh, he, he got a high stick in yeah. game two high or three. Stick. Oh, yeah, yeah, game two, I think, um, yeah. I do want to talk about Marshan kind of for a second a because bit. I don't know if either of you two saw the cheap shot that was done at the end of game three. Oh, Marshan no. cross-checked. Was it no? It wasn't a cross-check. It was a hit behind the head to one of the players on Columbus. Was it Riley Nash? No, it wasn't. It wasn't Nash. It was um, Dubinsky. Yeah, I think it was Dubinsky. Dubinsky. The league ended up coming back and saying, "No, we're not suspending him. No, it's not a fine." But how do you handle something like that? First of all, for me as a Bruins fan, it infuriated me because that was something that was classless. And shouldn't have been done. That was the dirtiest thing he's done all season. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> um, so I mean, because now the now the spotlight and the targets on Marshan yeah, coming into game. You know, it's yeah, kind of I is, think though, I think the Fred league Marshan. will be, and he did it to himself. Yeah. yeah, I think the league will be looking at that. I mean, but I think he's. I think the reason why he didn't get fined or suspended is because that's the dirtiest thing he's done all year. So he hasn't. They haven't really had much mm. of a reason this season to, you know, do anything to him. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is definitely the dirtiest three games he's played all playoffs. I mean, he's been clean. Uh, he's he been was, clean. He's had a so, relatively yeah. quiet season when it comes to doing stupid things. Do you think this is not an act of desperation, but an act of, like he has to fill that role because there, there I think are a lot of bruisers right now? I think, think he's trying to fire up the team. I think yeah. he's trying to I think to he get, is. Yeah. Um, I mean, somebody has to. Yeah. So let's look ahead to game four. I'm calling it a must win. I'm calling it a win. I'm going to put it on record right now that I believe the Bruins will win to the game that um, I will win game four and go 2-2 two -two in the series. That's my call right now. But let's figure out some of the keys to victory here. What's got to get done? Top line's got to figure something out. First of all, what do you feel coming into this game, too? I think they'll win. I'm not worried. Okay. I'm, you know, 
Uh, I haven't been worried at all the entire playoffs. Um, I mean, I wanted to shut the TV off a couple times, but um, but I haven't been worried. I mean, you look at the Toronto series, it's, it, was, it went the same way, but, you know, it, they're going to win tonight. They'll probably come back into Boston and most likely win game five. Um, at least that's the hope. I mean. I'm feeling that this is going to go seven games. But it puts the Bruins right back at the guard again for Game 7. Now, from watching Game 3, I want to call out the fans at the Garden for when the Bruins return. And I'm going to say to myself, I'm guilty of this too. I thought the fan base for Game 1 and 2 at the Garden was not very motivated. Oh, come not on. Not vocal enough. I was there. Not <laughs> loud enough. Oh, not pumping the team up like they should. I thought Columbus completely ruled the nest on game three. Granted, this is one of their first times in a round like this second round. Let's go, fans. You're not at a funeral. I you mean, got a chair. It could be. They you got to get up and you got to get your team. You get. You got to cheer your team Were on. Really, that? Uh, I have to say. Uh, I have to say, game one was better than game two. Game one was yeah. definitely better than game two. Was and game I know two, a lot I'm of not it. just saying that because no, I yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah. But you were there. You <laughs> were to, in to the, the defense it, right? of, of of some of the people, it was almost midnight, and they probably couldn't hold their liquor. Well, what, and was that a lot of them were probably asleep. That was um the that was a Saturday night game. Saturday night game. Yeah. Wake up, folks! Wake up! Your team is in the second round. Uh, got a great chance at winning a Stanley Cup. Like, let's go. Yeah. I want. I. I truly want the Grand Slam of of, of Boston sports. All right. That's why I'm putting blood. everything into this right now. Yeah. It's. It's. I want to it, see the Grand it's Slam. It's what I mean happen. by that is the Patriots winning, the Red Sox winning in the year, the Bruins and the Celtics all winning for it's the 2018-19 season. Yeah. I want to see it. I think both teams have a shot, yeah. Yep. So those are your keys yeah, right Celtics there. Celtics are playing really well right now. I yeah. want to light the biggest fire under that top line. They're all going to be together once again. There's no more juggling. And so you're going to have Marshan, Bergeron, and Poster on the same line. You have Bacchus inserted to your third line with, I think, Coyle. Probably. Figure it out, guys. Figure it out. you got a silver platter right now saying, here's your Stanley Cup. Come and get it. Yeah, and Bobrovsky's not playing that well. So, I mean, you, you're getting all these chances. Just capitalize. Get in the net. Now, looking at the other teams oh, around the NHL yeah. from stuff, am I wrong with saying the Bruins have a, have a silver platter right now? They do and they don't. Okay, give us a little bit of an insight. They do and they don't. Well, I mean, Carolina uh, is up 3-0 on the Islanders now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're – they're looking good, and they're missing half their team due to injuries. And Carolina is a seven seed? Carolina is a seven seed. I'm okay. not saying they're good enough to beat the Bruins, but, I mean, they're getting, luck they're getting lucky enough against the Islanders right now because the Islanders are under one of the best coaches in the NHL. Yep. Um, and had Carolina, they've had a pretty good success against the, the Bees this year? or No. Oh, wow. I no, they did. No. No, not, oh. no, not particularly. Oh, right. no. And what's, what's nice on the Carolina front is – they didn't really acquire anything at the deadline. So what you saw when you last oh, yeah. played them is kind of what you're going to get. The Blue Jays. They're, now, just, they're just hot right now. And now they're down there starting goalie, too. Your issue with Columbus back on that front is that there were so many moves that they did during yeah, the deadline. Yeah. They've been you got the Matt time. Duchesne there. You have um, Paneri. Panarin is there. Panarin. They got the Zingo. Yep. Um, they're giving it. They're like all the for right now. They got McQuaid. Yep, they got <laughs> oh, McQuaid. Man. And old. So yeah, those, old uh, they, they, they are putting everything, they're mortgaging everything on right now. Yeah. To the Bruins' credit, they still have those pieces for next year and beyond a little bit. Like even with the Coyle move, Coyle is still under contract for next year. He's not a which free agent great. or anything, which I great. like a lot. Yeah, Columbus is in trouble because if, if they don't finish out this round and end up coming out on top, uh, they're down a lot of their top players. Um, I feel like Tortorella might be done. Good. <laughs> Good. I can't stand him. Does he not look like a college professor behind the ice right now, though? I mean, he is With in a way. With the glasses and the damn vest he's got on. Wow, you really... Yeah. No, I agree. Okay, sure. I want to call him Dr. Uh, Dr. something. Dr. T or Dr. Teeth? 
Something like the Muppet like band leader, yeah. but Doctor Torts. Doctor Tort. Tort. Yeah. A tort for Tort. Reporting for duty. But yeah, and the I mean, back on the rest of the playoff series. Um, I mean, the toughest the toughest team that they would probably have to face is San Jose, but I pretty sure the Bruins beat them both times. Yep, they did. So, um, I mean, I, but yeah. And you're, you're saying San Jose. I, I, I'm looking at the Blues or the or the Stars. I'm not saying San Jose is going to come out on, on top. I'm just you're saying they're the toughest? They're the toughest right now in the West. Uh, Carolina, I don't, I mean, Colorado hasn't been able to figure out much against San Jose. Nope. They've been struggling. Um but yeah, the stars or the blues are. I think the NHL is in trouble if the Bruins don't make it out in the next round. As yeah, far as no because no really one else is going to watch. It. Yeah. You, well, you think about it. If you're an NHL thing, yeah, what yeah. do you if want for ratings East, and a if network? If you're on the East Coast, you got you have. Well, the Islanders. Make one it, series that's going to go ten o'clock. That's every why I think game. That, I think yeah. everybody oh, wanted to see the see, Islanders yeah. and the Bruins, but now that you have Bruins in Carolina, it's like what? Really? That's not a big market in Carolina. It's The best. So you you got to have the Bruins from that because Columbus doesn't have a market. No. No. Half Columbus their, versus their, Carolina. Ooh, half they're going to get like point twos. They're going to have to air it at like 2 a.m. Half of Columbus's uh, fan base is our Pittsburgh fans. Right. So. Then you have in the Western Conference. See, I'm looking still. I said on my sports minute, my prediction was the Blues and the Bruins for the Stanley Cup. I'm going to stick with it. I'm gonna stick with it because I don't want to be I don't want to be a man of my I want to be a man of my word. Excuse me. I want to say that's what I am expecting. I would not be surprised though if it were Dallas as well. I wouldn't be surprised. From what I saw last night, I saw I saw a pretty exciting game with the Stars and uh, the Blues, and Dallas went up in that series two two. Right now, your series, it's 3-0 Carolina against the Islanders, 2-1 Columbus over the Bruins. It is 2-1 Sharks over uh, Colorado, and it is 2-2 tied series between the Blues and Dallas. That's how it looks right now. The biggest surprise is the Carolina series right now. A huge, huge surprise. In a way, I kind of feel bad for the New York Islander fans. Not... Changing Ooh. gears. Ooh. <laughs> rough. Ouch. Rough, rough, rough. rough. For, for NY. I want to talk about the Celtics so I can wake you up a little bit. No. That's all right. The I'm here. Just give me the smelling salts of Brad Steven. You must be happy with it being 1 1, though, right now. Ag- uh, against. Um, sure. I mean, I can be glut- I can, you know, uh, I can admit that I, I was trying to be gluttonous and I wanted the second. <laughs> Game but, two wasn't too impressive, though. No, I mean, they, they, until the third quarter, they were neck and neck. And they were going back and forth, and then they just kind of like they got in a funk, didn't rotate, uh, weren't really driving to the basket much, and kind of fell into a, uh, an old trap of just chucking up threes, trying to keep up. And, you know, they didn't, uh, they didn't do what they did in game one, which is kind of handle Middleton, um, take their own, you know, get their own shots on the side. And uh, Kyrie also didn't find his shot in the Yeah, game Kyrie two was either. horrible. Horrible. In he that wasn't. Game. No, he wasn't good at all yeah. in game. Uh, he defensively, and I will admit this: Kyrie has been great defensively. Yep. Uh, on the whole, you can see him like go for pretty much everything. Yep. It's been it's been pretty nice. But yeah, no, I've enjoyed even the Indiana uh, series was kind of weird because you're like, oh, are they you know are they toying with them? Are they really there with them? Do, I mean, are they just playing to their weakness? I think that Indiana series, it was big that Oladipo wasn't a part of it. Of course. If Oladipo's there, it's a it whole may, different thing. I think it would be a little bit more of a competitive It's a whole different series. season if he's yeah. there anyways. Because, yeah. I mean, he was gone, I think, at the end of January, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Maybe it was like February, but, or, yeah, mid-February, who knows. I, I was most well, surprised for game one, I have to say. I didn't expect the Celtics oh, really? to get a 22-point win or margin of a victory against the Bucs. Yeah, I, I mean, didn't I expect see. that. Um, they just executed very well. That's I'm not kinda, surprised. I mean, I they're am, coming off on a sweep high, so, you know. Yeah, I mean... I, I, I again said it on our last show that we did. This this playoff is so crucial for Al Horford and Gordon Hayward. Those two guys right there are so important to anything that you want to do this season. Well, yeah. Hayward looked really good. I, I watched yeah, a little bit of Game Four on uh, Easter Sunday, and he looked really good that game. No, they they uh, he, he was been, hitting shot after yeah, shot after shot, shot, and he's driving to the basket. And uh, looks healthy. Game Two, there was a lot more of that kick out. Yep. Stuff, which was kind of weird. It's like, all right, just got a shot and yeah. effing get over it. <laughs> like, I was just kind of like, just drive. Like, because a lot of times, I know I said this last year about uh, a lot of, um, 
kind of Celtic maneuvering around the paint. But once you're in the paint and you, you're up in the air and you don't really have anyone who's contesting your shot, mm -hmm. why are you kicking it back out? And I know, like, if someone's, if someone's wide open, I guess, but you got that shot, especially if you're trying to get momentum, get that shot. I think in game two, like in the third quarter, that's when, you know, things unravel. Because they were going neck and neck. Yeah. And then all of a sudden yeah, it just kind of got away. Yeah, a four-point difference. Yeah. And it was just um, mid-third. That's when things slipped. It's nice to see that the team looks different. If we turn back the clock two months ago when we were <laughs> questioning, questioning what the heck was <laughs> sure, going to sure. happen, and I was screaming and yelling like I a know. buffoon. I, may, I maintain <laughs> my steadfast just wait because who what knows. What changed? What's changed? Is it because it's playoffs and this is what matters? I mean, I can't and imagine And they didn't that's care about the it. regular season? Yeah, maybe it, I think it's a combination of, yeah, it's playoff time and time to get serious. Uh, that they've given more minutes to Jalen Brown and, and Marcus Smart is out, who I love. Uh, but there's, you know, minutes don't have to be divided yep. uh, as as much as before. And I think when, if if and when Smart comes back, if it comes back at the end of this series or Eastern Conference, if they make it, uh, that it'll be great to get uh, Smart in on the second uh, or unit. the yeah. yeah second unit. I think it'd yeah. be great. He uh, whatever you say about his uh, defense, people don't say enough about his seeing the floor from an offensive standpoint. He may not uh, shoot the best. Uh, he, he can drive pretty well. But he sees the floor very well as far as, like, passing to an open <coughs> man, uh, figuring out the machinations behind uh, the pick and roll um, right. or a screen play. I mean, it's, it's pretty great. He, he's pretty magical, especially if you look back to the Phillies um, series last year. Mm -hmm. you can, in the second round, you can see how he was yeah, very Yeah, I remember that series well. He was definitely a, the spark that the Celtics needed there. Well, I think that's been very well... Uh, spo well uh, addressed and spoken of with Marcus Smart. He's like the spark of um, that team. They tick on him in a, w yeah. in a way. So I would like to see um, him come back soon. I know he's practicing and getting himself ready, so maybe he will be ready to go shortly, maybe even in this series. Who knows? Who knows? But we'll have to see. Before we wrap up the Celtics segment, I don't know if you guys heard, but Danny Ainge had a heart attack. That's today. what Mild I heard. Mild heart attack. Yeah, yeah. Seems like he's doing okay, but yeah. we want to wish him the best. Yep. That's his second health scare he's had That's in the past, a, like, five to ten years. I think it's ten years ago he had something. So, so yeah. definitely you got to monitor that situation well, no, hope carefully. He's hopefully right. he's doing okay. I think he's going to be back in Boston. Hopefully the Celtics will win isn't. for him, so that takes the stress off. Yeah, no, I know. Um, but looking at the other series going on in yeah. the NBA – we have the 76ers and the Raptors going about yep. there. Do you have a prediction on what's happening with that series? I actually, you know what? I, uh, that is kind of a weird toss-up. I can see Philly winning that in seven. I mean, okay. I, okay. I, can, I but, would like to see that. Uh, I think we can take Toronto, too. But I, mean, I think it would be it'd probably be better for the league and probably a lot more fun for C's fans to have a Philly uh, Celtics Eastern Conference Finals. We have final. had their number for years. We have, but the last game they played, they played as pretty. Although I don't think we had um, Hayward available, but we uh, we lost at their building. I think by a couple, by like a point or two. Yeah. Well, was, I mean, if they beat Milwaukee, I don't think it really matters who they play next. Yeah, I mean, I would. I think Toronto might be the best team. I think Milwaukee's Toronto might be good, it too. The but, Celtics I, have not done well over the years against Toronto. No, they haven't. And they really haven't. Kawhi Leonard has been a monster. He's a real for them. deal. But uh, game two, Philly almost gave away that game, but they they took game, you know, two and it's one one, yep. Yep. and they kind of handled Kawhi a bit. But Kawhi Leonard is the real deal. He's yep. the, he's he's a bad man, as they say. Western Conference, we have. Yeah. Um, you have Houston the, and Golden State. Houston and Golden and State. And Denver and Portland. And Denver and Portland. Um, let's go with the um, Golden State and. In Houston? Uh, in Houston series. What are you expecting out of that? I mean, I, uh, I mean, it's, it's so predictable to me. I think Golden yeah. State's going to, uh, if not win it in uh, six or five, they might even sweep it. Yep. I, I think Houston had a better chance last year to exercise that demon and, and yeah. get rid of Golden State. I mean, I could be dead wrong. Uh, maybe they come back at Houston and they, they uh, rattle off a pair. And then they go back. Are you like me that you're kind of sick of Golden State? No, no, no I, I, like I'm not State. necessarily. Okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not a rah rah Golden State guy, but yeah. I, you know, you gotta. Even before when they got to rant, they were really good, and they did it. They did it the right way without. You could say that Steph Curry, he is a superstar. He does really well. Clay Thompson, you could argue, is a superstar, uh, but not as crazy uh, superstar as Durant. Yeah. And then you have uh, Green, Draymond Green, yeah. who's one of my favorite. Uh, some people may call him slightly dirty, yeah. but a villain. Yeah, I mean, but he's like a 
he's a bruiser. He is a guy who, he's a, uh, there, Marcus Smart. Uh, he's one yep. of those guys who gets a lot of stuff done, and is, he, if they don't win no championship without him. And also, it, it would, I like that team. I like uh, Kerr. I like Steve Kerr. Yep. I think they uh, are just are interesting basketball, and they help shape what the game is today. Isn't it nice like not, it not seeing LeBron in the playoffs, though, I have to say? It's nuts. Yes. I was talking to a buddy of mine about that so the other wonderful. day. It's so weird that he has nothing to do with it right now. Yep. And people, I don't think people are reveling in it as much as they should. What a yeah. stupid decision on his part. Kind of, even if he went, like... To go to the Lakers. Well, I yeah. mean, like, maybe in a year that helps out. But, I mean, he literally just threw away a year of his career. Yep. To kind of just hang out and do what, like... To be a movie star in L.A. I don't even know That's... if he's being a movie... Is he being a movie star Ah, uh, who knows? No, but I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. But is he really, like, the only... I think he legit wanted to go there and, I just like, look at be him, a Laker I just look and get to the such, playoffs. such a joke. What, the Lakers? LeBron. Oh, LeBron? LeBron. I've never... I, I mean, you got to appreciate what he's, he's done He's one of the, the best court, players but, of all time. You but, can't... You can't... I know... Uh, it's hard for us to say this. What a Don, a little... Oh. Yeah, he can be. He can be really bad. <laughs> yeah. He can be really bad. But he's one of the best, like... Larry Bird, our boy, has said on numerous occasions, he's one of the best. Yeah. So, I mean... No, but it's, it's so weird that he did that and just poisoned that well that didn't necessarily need it to be poisoned. Nope. It's just like... It's like decapitating a corpse. It's already dead. Yeah. You're just, you know, defaming the body. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what they'll do. Like, the Lakers, they might pick someone up. They might get, uh, what's his name from uh, New Orleans? Um, oh, um, the one the Celtics have always Oh, yes, from. yes. I can't, oh, I can't. Why am I drawing a blank I'm drawing a blank, too. I love, I like his game. Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis. I like his game a lot. And, uh, yeah, that guy. That guy. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Tom, you'll be able to talk in a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, well, actually, Tom, what is, have you been watching any NBA playoffs or anything? Uh, I the watched or? a little of the, the – uh, no, just a little, <laughs> little bit <laughs> no, of the sorry. Celtics games. I haven't paid well, attention. I, you know, I, I mean – But what – yeah, what, it, what it's, it's funny because, you, you know, NH, NHL playoffs, you know, there's that. So that's a big yeah. thing. So, I, I mean, I can't really pay attention to much else after that. But um, – <laughs> I kind of forget that there's baseball still going on, you know, <laughs> starting up a little bit. Well, still. that gets lost in the shuffle, right? Yeah. And then, it's going to get lost in the shuffle on this show, and it's unfortunate, but oh, I just wow. want to keep it Celtics Bruins. No, no, it's. And then. Uh, <laughs> well, it's still early, too. Yeah. And then the, uh, I mean, the Celtics, and then, you know, Patriots just, draft, just LeBron. Or, yeah. Oh, just LeBron. Just yeah. LeBron. Like, yeah. you know, I, that's part of the reason why I don't like basketball. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not a fan, and it's, it's great. Yeah, I agree. I, I hate to say it. But he is one of the best yeah, of players. Course. In the, of course, we hate this player. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's part of the reason why. I mean, because he's always there, and it's always yeah, and it's always all about him. Yeah. One last time before we wrap it up, your game four prediction for the Bruins is score and win or lose, win or loss. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go big. I think the uh, I think the Bruins come out firing tonight. I think they put up five goals on Bobrovsky. Oh wow. Um, and I think Columbus comes up short and only gets two. Five two. Five two. Do you have a Do you have a thought? I mean, I would like to. Th- I I hope it's like a three one kind of thing. Not as. Uh, That's glorious. what I was leaning towards. Not as glorious as the fight, but I I mean, not to say I wouldn't. Who wouldn't take they, a fight? They need too. a big. They need a big win tonight. In offensive. They need a big. Show. Yeah. Yeah. Big I think it's going to be two one Bruins for a good majority of the game, and the empty net goal is going to be the solidifier and make it three one tonight, and that's going to tie your series at two two. Well, how about that's this? My they, they score five goals. Bergeron gets one. Marshawn gets two. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Big confidence booster if that happens, I'll tell you that. And, and then for your um, game, your game three. three, what is your thought well, on game that? Well, game three, I, I think when you go back to the Garden, I mean, we got one out of two. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good. That like, is pretty I good, mean, especially at a, a tough place yeah. to play. That's a big no, win. exactly. Milwaukee's tough to play. And I, I was really hoping they could have squeaked out uh, uh, game two. And it looked like they could have, uh, you no, know, for first time. half, yeah. Yeah, but um, you know what? I think they're going to uh, maybe not win huge, but maybe win by 10. Yeah. Maybe do that, or just they're going to win game three. And they're just going to maintain uh, or, yeah, maintain. Could the Celtics advantage. be going back to Milwaukee up 3 1? I think it's possible. I definitely I think do. it's possible, too. I think they can adjust to this and then just. Attack. I have them coming out of the series, and I, my, my prediction is Toronto versus Boston for the Eastern Conference Championship. You know what? That might, uh, that might be. I'm starting to weirdly. Not that lean. I want it. I'd rather Philly. I'd rather, I'd rather you Philly. You might get Philly, though. You might. You I, have know, want, I have a want. I have a want. And then I have a, a realistic thought. I yeah, think well, all Celtics fans want Philly. Yeah. I think but I, that would be a huge Because we know series. we can beat them because we've had well, the experience. I, well, that, I well, that and just the rivalry that's been going on between us and Philly. For, yeah. 
Yeah. So, but even recently, it's been you know across oh, across all professional sports yeah, yeah, yeah. other than baseball. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. It's a crazy time around here, folks. There's so many things that you need to pay attention towards. So we get it. We probably know that you're tired from following everything going on, but mm. it's the best time if you're a Boston sports fan. We got best two teams in a championship trying to get one. We have the Red Sox going on. The Patriots about to open up for their uh, training camps and all that stuff coming out. So. We hope you enjoy it all. We want to wish the Bruins and the Celtics the best, and hopefully they get out of this second round to move, in, to move ahead to the Eastern Conference Finals. That would be lovely. So hopefully the next time you see us here, we'll be talking about round three and getting closer and closer towards another championship or two in the city of Boston. I'm Nick Face. We'll see you next time here on another episode of Face the Facts. Goodbye.